you know, you've got a lot of people talking about Lee Eagle. You know, everyone seems to forgot about Lee Eagle. He was still very relevant within the crime world of Liverpool. And when you start speaking about Lee Eagle, you've got to start speaking about Colin Smith. And when you start speaking about Colin Smith, you've got to start speaking about Curtis Warren. Because Colin Smith was Curtis Warren's partner before Curtis Warren went to custody. And when Curtis Warren went to custody, Colin Smith was the man that took on the work for Warren. And when Warren went away, you had illegal who wanted the contact with Colombians. So Lee Eagle was the man that shot Colin Smith dead for the Irish cartel. He then went and tried to set up direct contact with these Colombians, but he was refused the possibility of doing so. And it gets deeper and deeper and deeper. But tonight's not the night to be speaking about all that stuff, is it? I'm going to be keeping all that content like I've been doing my research for months. Although I haven't been addressing that type of content due to the interaction with the DCI of the murder investigation team in Liverpool, I've still been researching individuals associated deeply to organised crime groups and the Liverpool Mafia. So, you know, let's just pull it back in, understand how dangerous it is that you keep telling me. You need to be quiet about this, Darren. The very dangerous individuals. So what? Does it look like I give a sh I've been screaming this sh in the name of Choose a Life, Not a Knife UK. I've been screaming this for years. Nothing's going to change. Why do I scream this? Sh because that group and them types of individuals within the city of Liverpool, have done nothing but destroyed it from within the core out. The amount of youth that are rotten in prison or being shot dead, the amount of addictions and families that have been broken down due to the distribution of narcotics within the city is massive still to this day. And yeah, I get people going, but you was the same in 2000s, but you did do 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 Yes, I was, and that's why I'm able to speak about this with knowledge of what and how they move around and what they get up to and how they treat people to get what they want and how they groom young men into a life of crime, a life, a path towards death and long jail term prisons. And if that child of anyone's mum or dad, it doesn't matter if that child does not play ball, he can get absolutely persecuted. You've got a murder right now, a murder trial that's happening right now at Liverpool Crown Court of young Tui. He's a young lad who was manipulated, groomed by this gang to participate in the resale of narcotics around the, around the Liverpool area. And the old tactic is what they always do, these adults that are playing on the youth. And this is a tactic that they always do. They'll get this kid who's game. They'll know he's making a lot of money for them. But when this kid finds himself a decent girl and that decent girl starts saying to that kid, you need to come away from this, otherwise you're going to go to jail and I can't be with you and so on and so forth. When this kid starts embracing life and looking at the opportunity that this young, lovely young girl is bringing to him, he decides he wants this off now, but he can't. So to keep him in the picture, what these adults will do is buy him gifts. They'll buy them gifts, they'll buy them stuff. And what they'll do with that stuff is have it stolen. So for example, if I wanted A to play my way, I would buy him a nice bike worth three grand and go, yeah, mate, there's a bike. 
I would then get the little rats that's been on me books for the last few years, go and smash that bike or take that bike out of his garden. Next minute, the bike's robbed. Next minute, the young man is going back to these people going, the bike's being robbed. Da, da, da. That man is now saying to that kid, well, I want this much off you and you're not going nowhere till you've paid me this. Now, that young lad is forced into continuing to deal drugs so he pays for the bike back. And when he's paid over the amount for the bike, there's another reason why he can't go because these adults have done something else to keep him in the picture. But when you get a lad like Young too, who's got the balls and doesn't want to participate with this group or that group, they hound him down, they chase him into a shop and they absolutely stand all over him. And that's ongoing right now. Well, Daz, do you remember the Parkers from Priory Road? I remember, I remember one, mate. I remember one. A rapist. His dad had... His dad, I remember this one. One of them was... Was it Tony? Tony? Yeah, he's a rapist, isn't he? Yeah, it is. His dad was this big businessman, so he was saying. And he'd done this dirty crime when he was a kid. But that's all I can remember about them, la. Can't remember nothing else about them. Yes, Crumster, hope you're well, mate. Rob, Rob Smith, if they come after you and you were cornered and you managed to kick a knife or a gun out of one of their hands, would you pick up the knife or a gun to defend yourself? Definitely. Who wouldn't? You're in a fight for your life. And they have come after me, mate. They have tried to shoot me dead. Don't don't under, underestimate what they've tried to do with me. Go to 2018, the 17th of March. Google it. Google it on your echo. Go to Liverpool Echo, 17th of March, 2018. Go and look at it. So don't don't suggest that they haven't come after me. Don't suggest that Darren Till and his homeboys haven't tried to pounce on me in the city centre of Liverpool last New Year, last Christmas. You know, they're all, they've always been after me. It's crazy. In a bit, kid. You're asking too much. Flamingo, fact, killed over a bike, drug debt, £1,500. It's in the echo now, actually. Go and look in the echo right now. Nice to have you in, Flamingo. Didn't recognise you there because I'm speaking at the camera, if you like. I'm not looking at the comments. I know I've got a lot of in the comments trying to say. They're just getting blanked. And when they get blanked, it irritates them even more. And then when I look down and I see them repeating, 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 they just get blocked off. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like that. Well, you know, why did I come back onto that subject? I came back onto that subject. Because someone mentioned Paddy the Baddy. And for months I've been back and Paddy the Baddy up. And it was, it was, I think it's the right moment for me to distance any positive comments I've made about that kid. Any, any, any good comments or big shout outs I've drove towards that kid. I retract them all. I didn't know his company. I didn't know or understand his association to certain organised crime groups. And... For the past month or six weeks or so, I have done. I've delved deeper into it, and it's quite obvious to me, if it's not obvious to all yous, it's quite obvious to me how deeply connected he is to the Zeist brothers and their organised crime group that have committed murder on the streets of Liverpool, that have and still do have an input in gun smuggling and drug dealing around the neighbourhoods and communities in the city of Liverpool. So when you've got one screaming famous Jesus on this side and then he, he's keeping dirty, dying secrets about his best buddies, you are who you're with. And if you're sitting with a piece of poison and you're mixing with poisonous people and dirty people, you are going to eventually end up getting a bit of dirt on your face. And that's what's happened tonight. Unfortunately, for me, I'm the one who's got the stage to speak about this. I'm the one that's going to get the backlash. I'm the one that's going to go, oh, he's just hating. Oh, he's just this. I'm not hating when you're speaking facts. It's not hating when you're speaking truths. You know, if we were sitting here inventing lies or just to start targeting someone, 
I'd be like the people I'm targeting, wouldn't I? Cyber bullies and trolls. I'm definitely not like them. I don't sit here with a mask on. I sit here blatantly in your face, telling you truth, telling you facts. And the fact of this matter is, when he's screaming in interviews that his best mate is Zist, and them Zists are in custody now for some of the worst crimes you can commit, although they've never been charged with murders, although they're still avoiding the consequences of the Ashley Gale murder, you've got to understand how deep and intricate they are when it comes to them murders. Anyway, people, it is what it is. Danny McKenna, how are you, la? Peter Brown, screen too bright, you know that. Flamingo, 465 in the house, wanting more of your powerful content fact. And you know what, um, Flamingo, the only reason I backed off is because when I was speaking about the, the Thomas Cashmans of the world, when I was speaking about, you know, young Sam and Ashley Gale's murder, it was getting deep. It was sending a lot of vibrations. There was a lot of awareness being raised. Due to my efforts during them times, a lot of people did have the balls to start speaking to the law, did have the option of going out and helping to protect their youth upon the streets. And when you've got the Chief Inspector Kelly, I think her name is, coming out there and saying, the no grass and culture in Liverpool does not exist anymore. It's partly to do with a lot of things. And I believe I have my shout in that. I believe I've encouraged quite a few people to have their and shout when you've got young girls being shot dead on the streets of Liverpool the way we've seen in the last year. It's very important that the people in the communities that are sick to death of this start standing up and be counted. And it doesn't matter how you stand up and be counted. There's loads of ways that you can share what you know without becoming a target to these organised crime groups. It's as simple as that. Grow a set of balls, have nipples like bullets and start doing what you can do to prevent any more atrocities like the murder of young girls happening on the streets of Liverpool. And I'll re reach out to all you in Manchester, Birmingham, all you that are sick to death of watching young men be stabbed shot dead over drug activity, over gang issues. You need to start growing a set of balls and raising voices. Don't wait until another kid gets killed. It's all about prevention is better than cure. And how long have you been hearing me scream that? Prevention is always going to be better than cure. And you have got the ability, just like I have, to prevent any more young kids getting involved in gang crime, any young more lads or girls getting hurt through gang violence and drug violence, ending up shot dead or incarcerated for a long, long time because they got left to be groomed because you weren't raising your voices. Prevention will always be better than cure, no matter how you look at it. It doesn't matter what it is. It can be a disease. It can be a crime. It can be an injury. Preventing all this happening will have a hundred percent lot more benefits from it than trying to cure it when it's done. Okay, so when young when young um, Rhys Jones was shot dead, the whole city stood up and screamed, "We cannot let this happen again!" Ra ra, bloody fucking ra. Fifteen years later, to the day we get a young girl of nine shot dead in the city of Liverpool. What happens then? We've had, oh yeah, ra 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 ra. Are you gonna let it die down? Are you gonna go quiet now because they've arrested someone? You need to keep it flowing. You need to keep it consistent. Otherwise, we will get another child shot dead, another child stabbed dead, another child groomed into the life of crime, another child, another child led down a path where he's sitting behind bars for the next twenty-five years because everyone stopped raising their voices about what's going on. Prevention will always be better than cure, and I've been screaming it from the get-go. Consistently, you have heard that phrase coming out of my mouth, prevention is better than cure. All of a sudden now, Merseyside Police, I've given the head to shake, 
and I started to realise that preventing this from happening is 10 times better than dealing with the trauma and the vibrations that go on once it's happened, trust me. so anyway it is what it is choose a life not a knife as always as i say it's up to those people on the communities you've seen me come away from this type of content and i'm gonna come right back at it i've got to get right back at it you think i've gone quiet and have turned me back on it you know, the amount of people I'm contacting me to mention this unsolved murder, that unsolved murder, and I want to, but I've been sitting here thinking I can't do because of that little email I got off Merseyside Police. From here on in, I'm going to start going back at it. I'm going to start creating me content again. I'm going to start getting back on what I'm here for, and that's to raise awareness within the communities to protect the children. 